Uh, good morning, uh, dear students. Welcome to another session of uh, Introduction to Data Structures and Algorithms. So in uh, previous session, we started off uh, our discussion uh, with respect to algorithms. So in which uh, we discussed a few of the aspects as to what is meant by algorithm. Uh, that is the alternate definitions. Uh, then what is the characteristics? What are the characteristics of an algorithm? Then we uh, uh, went into how we can represent an algorithm that is using the English phrases or the flowcharts or the pseudocode. Uh, then we discussed regarding some of the conventions on uh, when we are writing a pseudocode or one of the representations of algorithms, what conventions we can follow when we are writing the algorithm. Uh, so few examples also we had uh, gone through. So we had uh, looked out at uh, this parameter that is how efficiency is uh, defined. So I'll just have a recap of uh, this part as it is required in this session. So efficiency of an algorithm is defined in two ways. That is one based on the time requirement and one based on the memory requirement. Now, whenever an algorithm is uh, running uh, or if it is uh, implemented, how much time that algorithm will take to complete its tasks. So uh, an output is expected from the algorithm. What is the time required for the algorithm to get that result when particular inputs are given? So that will give me the timing requirement of the algorithm. Similarly, when, when I run an algorithm to obtain a desired output and the time required for that algorithm to provide me the output for the given set of input will are defined now uh, that is how much memory is consumed for that process will uh, define the memory requirement for that algorithm so based on these two we have uh, the specification which we tell it as time complexity and space complexity so time complexity uh, uh, basically tells me how much time uh, does the algorithm take to uh, to provide the expected outputs for a given set of inputs and uh, next one uh, the space complexity it gives me the information of how much amount of memory is consumed by the algorithm uh, to provide the expected output for a given set of input. So this is uh, time complexity and space complexity definition. Now when we come to algorithm complexity, it is the combination of these two, that is time complexity plus space, uh, space complexity. <laughs> So algorithm complexity basically is a function which helps us to obtain the running time of an algorithm. So which is nothing but the time complexity and uh, the memory requirement for the algorithm, which is the space complexity. Uh, that is for the given set of inputs. So what is the algorithm? How much time it consumes? How much memory it consumes to provide the expected output for a given set of input? So that overall will identify the algorithm complexity. So next uh, we look into what is meant by asymptotic notations. Uh, so now previously we uh, spoke about time complexity, space complexity and algorithmic algorithm complexity. Uh, so in uh, this case, uh, what we do is uh, how do we identify the running time or the time complexity of an algorithm. So in order to do that, we make use of the asymptotic notations. So what does this notation do is it helps us to describe the time complexity, which is the running time of an algorithm. That is, if you provide a set of input to the algorithm, how much time it will take to complete its execution. So that uh, will be identified by the asymptotic notation. So that is what is mentioned over here. It gives me the running time or the time complexity. It basically describes these para this parameter for the algorithm. And uh, since we had uh, seen in this slide that time complexity is one of the factors which can be used to identify the efficiency of an algorithm. So this uh, asymptotic notation helps us to represent the efficiency of an algorithm or indirectly the performance of an algorithm. And now uh, in this case, we can have uh, three possible conditions for time complexity. That is, uh, what is the running time required for the algorithm? Uh, it can have uh, three 
uh, cases one is the uh, best case that is uh, how fast the algorithm can run uh, whether i'll be getting a worst case that is how slow the algorithm will run and in between of these two so these are the uh, two end points extreme ends and in between i can have the average case so which is the average time so we'll be looking uh, into a few of the notations in the coming forth uh, slides and the sessions so there will be discussing regarding these so i can have time complex complexity defined in three uh, ways how fast the algorithm will execute which will give me the best case condition how slow the algorithm will run which will give me the worst case condition or what is the average time consumed by the algorithm for its execution which will give me the average case condition so based on these uh, this thing i have three asymptotic uh, notations for an algorithm which are termed as big o notation omega notation and theta notation so these three notations i uh, will be discussing so what is basically big o notation uh, so big o notation is used to obtain what is the upper limit for the running time of an algorithm so basically it is uh, uh, helping you to compute what is the maximum possible amount of time what is the maximum possible amount of time that an algorithm will take to complete its execution so that is that is the big o notation so it is giving you the upper bound of the running time of an algorithm so it is uh, telling how much is the maximum time that the algorithm will take in order to complete its execution uh, it is denoted by the capital letter o now by definition what is big o notation so now in this case we will be considering two functions f of n and g of n which are two positive functions and uh, f of n and g of n are functions of the variable which is uh, sorry uh, the uh, uh, f of n and g of n are the dependent uh, variables and n is the independent variable so the f of n and g of n are the two positive functions uh, which are functions of n uh, now in this case n is nothing but the size of the input data what you are considering so when you are specifying this if you just uh, identify i cannot have the size of the input data which is less than 0 that is i cannot have a negative number it has to be either equal to 0 or greater than 0 then uh, i can call the function f of n as big o of g of n i can call this function as big o notation of g of n if and only if uh there exists a positive constant c there exists a positive constant c and an integer n not such that this condition is satisfied this condition is satisfied so by definition what we have we have two functions f of n and g of n which are the two positive functions of n and n is the size of the input data now f of n is called the big o notation of g of n provided that it satisfies the condition f of n is lesser equal to c times g of n so that is this function should be lesser equal to this function based on what value you are choosing for c and based on the values of n and in this case what you are doing is you are trying to see what value of n will satisfy the condition so here you have uh, if you have positive integer c and an uh, integer n not which is great n greater than n not and this condition is satisfied then i can specify that f of n is big o notation of g of n which is identified as f of n is equal to o of g of n now when we are specifying uh, these things i can have uh, different possibilities of the complexity so here uh, it can be a constant that is it is taking a, a constant uh, this thing as the num you give any number of inputs you are having a constant time which is being consumed by the algorithm so that is uh, it leads to 
say if you uh, try to execute a algorithm and you try to run an algorithm and it takes 10 seconds for 10 inputs next if you give 20 uh, inputs and even then it is uh, giving you just the uh, 10 seconds it is consuming 10 seconds so in that case it will be co constant it is having the constant complexity similarly as uh, the big o notation changes you will you might have linear uh, variation quadratic variation cubic exponential logarithmic and different conditions are also possible so linear how it will be uh, if i if this identifies that this is uh, say uh, the number of inputs and this is the big o notation if it is linear then what happens is n should be greater than zero so if i keep on increasing so it will be varying linearly if n is one it might consume some amount of time over here so let me assume that it is straight away one second if it is having two this thing it might consume two seconds so it is linearly dependent on the input so these are the possible conditions of complexity <clears throat> So remember, f of n should be lesser than equal to c times g, uh, g of n, where c is a positive integer and n should be greater than n naught. So these two values will identify whether f of n is a big O notation of g of n. So here, uh, <clears throat> Here we can just see an example what they have provided. So this line what they are showing, it is just an example what they are representing it. So this is f of n. Now, uh, if you just observe uh, after this point, uh, the other one and uh, this one is the c of n, c into g of n. Now, as per your condition, uh, what is given? F of n should be less than c less than equal to c times g of n for all the values of n greater than n naught. Now, here you can see that here f of n is greater, the condition fails. But after this point, after this point, from here to here, you can observe that f of n is lesser than equal to c times g of n. C times g of n. But after this point, again, it is uh, not satisfying the condition that because f of n is again greater than c times g of n. So this part, if you just observe, it is greater. But after this point, if I make an observation that is at n naught, what is happening is this f of n is retaining its value. I mean, it is uh, satisfying the condition that f of n is always less than c into g uh, c into g of n for all the values of n greater than n naught. Now, again, if uh, this function changes and if it is here, then this is not the value of n naught. This n naught I cannot consider. So I have to see where that condition is being satisfied. So in this case, what is happening? So in this case, what is happening? after this point at n equal to n naught at n equal to n naught i am having fn which is less than c times g of n so this is satisfying this condition therefore after n is equal to n naught i can specify that f of n is big o notation of c of g c into g of n so that is uh, this is how we have to look around for the condition so let us look at our problem uh, based on uh, the specification now derive the big o notation if f of n is 8 into n plus 7 and g of n is equal to n so two functions they have given uh, which in which we have f of n which is uh, g, uh, 8 8 uh, 8n plus 7 and g of n is equal to n now you have to identify uh, whether this f of n uh, will satisfy the big O notation of g of n. So I need to just check out whether this f of n will be equal to big O notation of g of n. So this is what I have to check out. 
So in order to do this, we can uh, do it in two different ways. One is uh, trying to uh, deal with the trial and error method. That is, you try to uh, substitute different values of n uh, in these two conditions, assuming one value for c, and see whether you'll be able to obtain the result. Or else, if possible, uh, if it is linearly related, then directly you can solve the, uh, solve the equation and try to see whether you'll be getting the option over here. So in this method, uh, he has tried to simplify the equation. So here, uh, so uh, as per the condition, uh, what is uh, big O notation? Big O notation should satisfy this condition. That is f of n should be lesser or equal to c into g of n, where n is greater than n naught. So for all these values, it should be able to satisfy this condition. So now uh, that is what I need to check out. So I need to identify what is the value of n naught if it exists uh, for which this condition is satisfied. So now uh, let us uh, consider that. Let us consider that uh, say f of n satisfies this condition and I'll try to obtain what is the value of n naught. So uh, f of n is lesser or equal to c times g of n. What is f of n? f of n is 8 times n plus 7, which is lesser or equal to c times n. So for this should be satisfied for all the conditions of n greater than n naught. Now uh, here you can uh, try to give different values of c. Based on different values of c, you might have different conditions based on which you'll be arriving over here. So now in this case, we are considering let C be equal to 15. So we have to consider it to be a positive integer, C to be a positive integer. So if that is the case, so we can have C equal to one, C equal to two. So it's again a trial and error based. So if I consider C is equal to 15, if I consider C is equal to 15. So what, what will be the solution uh, when I substitute it in this equation. So I'll be having eight times n plus seven lesser equal to 15 n. So when you uh, simplify this equation, what you are having, you are having seven lesser equal to seven n. So when we observe over here, we get n greater equal to one. We get n greater equal to one. So if uh, that is the case, uh, what we have is f of n uh, is satisfying this condition when c is 15 and n is greater or equal to 1. So in this case, this value is nothing but n naught. Now here, another point to note down is, in this case, why they have considered it as 15. If you take any number less than 15, what will happen is, this side I'll be getting a fraction that is which will be less than uh, one which will be less than one so if I have something as uh, point 0.2 uh, so in this case what is n giving n is giving n is indicating that it is the number of inputs that is the size of the input data so when I'm giving any input the size will be either zero or it will be greater than zero. That is, it can be one input, two input, so on. So if it is in between, then what should be considered? Whether it, I should consider it as zero or whether I should consider it as one. So that ambiguity is there. So if that ambiguity comes in, you have to change the value of C and try to obtain the, uh, say whether you'll be able to obtain a value which is integer. You try to obtain it as an integer over here. Because of which we are considering C is equal to 15. So when we consider that we have n greater equal to one. So we have the condition that f of n satisfies this condition when n is greater equal to n naught. So what is this specifying? n naught is equal to one satisfies the condition. Satisfies the condition. So this is how we are obtaining the big O notation representation. So in this case, f of n will be the big O notation of the function g of n.
So this is uh, what is happening in this case. So now let us look at another problem in which uh, he has uh, made use of uh, trial and error uh, method. <clears throat> so here derive the big O notation if f of n is 2n plus 2 and g of n is n square. So now again uh, here we have a quadratic equation. So if I try to solve it using uh, this method, right, uh, it might end up having two results. So because you'll be having plus and minus uh, when you solve the quadratic equation, we might have uh, two results because we anyway, having two possible solutions because of the quadratic representation. So here uh, f of n is 2n plus 2 and g of n is n square. So now uh, as per the condition, uh, what should be uh, checked? We have to check whether f of n satisfies this condition that is f of n is lesser or equal to c times g of n. So this condition has to be satisfied for the values of n greater than n naught. So in this method, what they have done is they have used the trial and error method by substituting the n values. So here, uh, if you uh, just observe what we have, if I substitute n is equal to 1 in both the equations, what I am having f of n is 4 and g of n is 1. So in this case, what is happening? f of n is greater than g of n. So in this case, we can consider that c is equal to 1. c is equal to 1. So if uh, when I consider this, what is happening? f of n is greater than g of n. It is greater than g of n. So this is not satisfying the condition for n is equal to 1. Now next you try to substitute the next uh, possible value of uh, n which is 2. So when you substitute 2 f of n is equal to 6 and g of n is equal to 4. So again uh, even here what is happening f of n is still greater than g of n. So it is not big O notation of g of n for n equal to 2. But n is equal to 3 we have f of n is equal to 8 and g of n is equal to 9. So if you want you can just cross verify with the rest of the values. So if n is equal to 4, you have 2 times 4, 8 plus 2, 10 and uh, here it will be 16. So it keeps on increasing. So as n increases from 3, right, what happens is I have a condition wherein I get f of n is lesser equal to c times g of n. Uh, so this condition is satisfied by the function f of n. That is this big one representation. The condition is f of n is lesser or equal to c times g of n is true when n is greater than 2. <clears throat> when n is greater than 2. That is when the n value is equal to 3. At that point, the condition starts to satisfy. So therefore, when n is greater than 2, the condition satisfies with this case. So therefore, we have uh, f of n as big O notation when n is greater than 2 wherein which indicates that n naught is equal to 2 in this case. Okay. <clears throat> so we'll uh, go ahead with the next one which is the omega notation. So in uh, big O notation, we checked the condition that f of n is lesser equal to c times g of n. Now in omega notation, it is the other way. So there we were checking for what? Maximum bond. We were checking for upper bond and the maximum possible amount of time. And in omega notation, this will be, this will be reverse. It will be the lower bond what we'll be checking and we'll be checking for the minimum possible amount of time. So therefore, based on that, one condition changes over here. That is, this becomes greater than equal to. Rest all remains same. So uh, what does omega notation uh, give me? It gives me the lower bound of the running time of an algorithm. Uh, 
uh, so which basically tells us that what is the minimum amount of time which will be consumed by the algorithm in order to complete its entire execution. So it is, it is just the opposite of the big O notation. And it is denoted by the symbol omega. It is denoted by the symbol omega. So by definition, uh, what we can uh, specify as the omega notation, if we have two functions, f of n and g of n, which are two positive functions of n, where n is the size of the input data, then we can call f of n as omega of g of n if and only if there exists a positive constant c and an integer and an integer n naught such that f of n is greater equal to c times g of n for all possible values of n greater than n naught. Now in previous also this n naught what we have specified it was an integer this was a positive constant. So the same thing and uh, if it satisfies then we can write f of n as omega of g of n. So now based on the graph, how it will be represented. So here we have the graph which is for f of n and the other one is for c into g of n. So now here if I just observe what is happening is before this from 0 to this point f of n is less than c times g of n but after this value it is greater than it is satisfying the condition. But what happens is, but after some, this thing, if you just observe at this point to this point, in this case, what is happening? The condition fails. That is, this condition is failing over here. So if that is the case, what happens is we check out for the next state. So from here onwards, if you just observe what is happening is f of n is maintaining this condition. So here, when n is equal to n naught, after this value, what is happening is f of n is satisfying the condition that it is greater than c times g of n. So if this function continues to be in this state, that is that condition is being satisfied after these values of n naught, then I call this function as omega of c times g of n. So now let us look into an example for the omega notation. So deduce the omega notation if f of n is 2 times n square plus 4 and g of n is 6n. So here as per the condition what I have to just check out whether it is less than or whether it is equal to c times uh, g of n. So I can uh, consider uh, c equal to 1 which is a positive constant. So consider c is equal to 1 and try to see whether you will be able to obtain the result. So this is what I have to check out. Uh, sorry, uh, the condition is greater than equal to. Sorry. So I have to check the condition f of n is greater equal to c times g of n. This is what you have to check for omega notation. So now you have f of n as uh, 2 times n square plus 4 and g of n as 6 times n. Now again you go for trial and error method. So in which you substitute n is equal to 0. So when you substitute n is equal to 0, f of n is 4 and g of n is 0. So in this case what is happening, uh, we are satisfying the condition that f of n is greater than g of n when we consider uh, c is equal to 1. But uh, let us see whether it satisfies for the next values also. Uh, directly we will not settle for this possible value. We will try to see whether other possible values are there. So it is satisfying here. So n is equal to 1 when we substitute. f of n is equal to 6. g of n is equal to 6. So this, is, this condition is giving what? f of n is equal to g of n. Now when we substitute n is equal to 2, we have f of n which is equal to 12, g of n which is equal to 12. Similarly, f of n uh, in this case both are equal. Now when n is equal to 3, what we are having? f of n is 22 and g of n is 18. g of n is 18. So here what we are having? We are having the condition f of n greater than g of n. So here if you just observe what we have, uh, here we got it as greater than for n greater than 0. 
then for this condition we got it as equal so it is like the function went up and then it equaled the condition then it uh, equaled the condition so at this point again it came down to the value so here again uh, when we checked for two still it was equal so it was equal with uh, say uh, the g of n value so next again uh, when we checked for three right it came out that it uh, gave a value of f of n greater than 18. So similarly, you can continue for few more values and try to see out whether it is satisfying the condition when n is equal to 4, 5, 6 and uh, so on. So if, if it keeps on satisfying this condition, then I get to know that after this point, after this point, so at uh, 1 we got it equal, at 2 also we got it as equal. So at two also we got it as equal. So, but after this point, if you just keep on verifying this, you'll be getting a value where G of N is this way and uh, F of N is greater than the value of G of N. So for that condition, what happens is in our case, N naught turns out to be two. So after these values, F of N is satisfying the Omega notation condition. So therefore what we uh, assume that uh, f of n is greater than c times g of n if n is greater than n naught that is n is greater than 2. So if, if this is the case then we specify that f of n is the uh, omega notation of g of n. So this is with respect to the omega notation. So here again you are going ahead with the trial and error method. So here when n is equal to zero, the condition was satisfied. So we did not stop here itself. We tried to see for other values also. When n is equal to one, it turned out both are equal. When n is equal to two also, it turned out to be equal. So next integer value of n is three. So for three, it turned out it is greater than g of n. So try it out for four, five, six, and so on. And if this condition is kept, is maintained throughout, then you have the limit that is after n is equal to 2. You are satisfying all the condition for f of n to be called as omega notation of g of n. So you, you are basically identifying what is the value of n naught in these cases. So here we have another example. Deduce the omega notation if f of n is 2 times n plus 6, which is and uh, g of n is two times n. So if you look at the equation itself, if you look at the equation itself, you can make out. So this is uh, two times n plus six and this is two times n. So this two times n itself is nothing but g of n. So therefore f of n is always greater than g of n. If you just uh, observe this equation. So but uh, try to go ahead with the trial and error. So here n is equal to zero, what you're getting f of n is uh, six and uh, g of n is zero. So this condition is being satisfied. So n is equal to one, when we check it is uh, eight and g of n is two. So condition is satisfied. So if you just observe it is satisfied for all the conditions. It is satisfied for all the conditions. So here, uh, what we have done is uh, we have chosen again c is equal to 1. If you choose c equal to uh, some other value, again, it might change over here. There might be some changes over here. So, so for example, if I take uh, c as 10, so it will be 10 times 2 of n, which will be 12. So uh, for that case, what happens is n0 value will change. So for simplicity, we assume say c is equal to 1 and we try to obtain what is the value of n naught. So here what we have, we have f of n which is satisfying the value for all the values of n greater than 1. Uh, but uh, this should be actually equal to n greater than 0. This should be actually n greater than 0 where n naught is 0. So just uh, rectify this one. So it is for n naught greater than 0, right, uh, greater than 0, I am having all the conditions which are being satisfied for f of n being called as omega notation of g of n. <clears throat> uh, 
so the uh, last one uh, what we have is the theta notation so previously we had big o notation which gave me the uh, upper bound uh, that is the maximum time of uh, execution and uh, the uh, we uh, discussed regarding the omega notation which gave me the lower bound or the minimum amount of time required for the algorithm to execute now theta notation is actually in between both it gives me the average execution time you can specify the average time which an algorithm consumes to complete its execution so that is uh, with respect to theta notation so it is uh, theta notation uh, it uh, tries to express the running time of an algorithm which is between that of the upper and the lower bounds uh, in this case uh, it basically helps to compute the average time that an algorithm will take to complete its execution so the what is the time in between the upper bound and the lower bound so theta theta notation is specifying that so now by definition uh, what we have if f of n and uh, g of n are two positive functions of n where n is the size of the input data so again i am specifying it since it is size the input data can be either zero that is no input data it can be one it can be two it cannot be in between i cannot specify that there are 0.5 input data so i cannot specify it has to be an integer it, it has to be 0, 1, 2, 3. So that is what it specifies. So n is the size of the input data. Then uh, f of n is called as the uh, theta function of uh, our uh, theta notation of g of n if and, if, uh, if and only if there exists two positive constants. Since we are dealing with lower bond and upper bond, in this case, what happens is we'll be having two limits two constants that is i'll be having one for the lower bond and one for the upper bond uh, so this will be for the lower bond and this one can be the upper bond so uh, c1 and c2 such that this condition is satisfied wherein c1 times g1 is less than or equal to f of n so this is what uh, here you're specifying that f of one is uh, f of n is greater than c1 times uh, g of n so this is giving me what this is giving me the omega notation and this one if you just observe it is giving you the big o notation so this is giving this side is giving you the maximum time limit and this side is giving you the minimum time limit for the execution so if this condition is satisfied if this condition is satisfied then we specify that f of n is theta notation of g of n so that is what we check out in this case so this is uh, this is how it will appear so here uh, f of n uh, we uh, in previous this thing we had seen that say this is the function so if we just observe after this point after this point f of n is in between c2 g of n and uh, c1 g of n it is in between so it is like the it is giving you almost the average of these two or it is giving you the average time so here it is satisfying the condition that f of n is sorry uh, less than uh, c2 g of n and this uh, it is giving the other condition f of n is greater than c1 of g of n so if this is the case so here this part is what this part is giving you the upper bond this part is dealing with the lower bond and this f of n is actually in between these two so which is giving you the average or uh, average time uh, of average time the algorithm will consume to complete its execution <clears throat> so if that case is uh, satisfied then we call f of n as the theta notation of g of n uh, so now uh, let us check out uh, one example over here so deduce the theta notation if f of n is 2 times uh, 2 times n plus 8 and uh, g of n you are considering it as 5n so this is uh, g of n uh, which is actually equal to 5n so now for this function we need to identify what is whether f of n can be called as a theta notation or not 
So here uh, you try to identify the possibilities. Uh, what you do is again, you make use of this trial and error method, what we have discussed over here. So one for omega notation and one for theta notation and try to see whether you will be able to obtain the condition which is given over here. So you try to see whether f of n is greater than g of n, f of n is greater than c g of n for which all values of n. So when I try to simplify it, it gives me a result that f of n is greater than g of n when, uh, sorry, uh, here they have considered g of n as uh, equal to n. Here they have considered g of n as equal to n. Uh, since uh, C1 and C2 are considered as 5 and 7 respectively. C1 and C2 are considered as 5 and 7 respectively. So please make that change. So this is G of N. Uh, this is uh, G of N. G of N is N. F of N is 2 times N plus 8. Now what I have to do is I have to check for these two conditions. Say uh, I'll check for whether f of n is can be greater than or equal to c1 times g of n. So in this one, what we are considering c1 as 5. Uh, so you try to solve this one for the condition. So you can simplify it directly or you can use your trial and error method. So if you simplify it directly, you will be getting a condition that when n is greater or equal to 2, the function f of n is satisfying this condition. When n is greater or equal to 2, the function f of n is satisfying this condition. That is f of n is greater than 2 times, uh, sorry, 5 times n. That is, this condition is satisfied when n, uh, when n is greater than or equal to 2. Now, next what we have, we have f of n. Uh, similarly, you can uh, test it out for different, different possible values. So, you chose uh, c1 as Five. Next, you can uh, go for the uh, next representation and uh, choose as six and see whether uh, we satisfy the conditions. Uh, so in uh, next condition uh, here, we can check out that f of n is lesser than seven times g of n. So if I try to simplify this equation, what I'll be having, I'll be having the condition satisfied for n greater or equal to two. Now, if you uh, make an observation over here, uh, when I consider this parameter for n greater or equal to 2, the condition is satisfied. When I consider this one, the uh, for n greater or equal to 2, it is being satisfied. So what is this specifying? So this part is satisfied for n greater or equal to 2. And even this part is satisfied for n greater or equal to 2 when I choose C1 as 5 and C2 as 7. So if this is the case, then I can, uh, I can make an observation that when this n naught value is 2, the function f of n is satisfying this entire condition. The function f of n is satisfying this entire condition. So therefore, I can call f of n as theta notation of g of n and in which g of n in this case is n. g of n is equal to n. So this is with respect to theta notation.